Hey everybody, Ryan DeWitt here from DeWitt Physical Therapy. We wanted to introduce to you our CrossFit movement screen. Now these are all movements that we ask our patients to do, but more specifically our athletes to do uh, in our CrossFit gym next door. So anytime we work with a CrossFit athlete, there's a specific basic set of movement competencies that you should have. Because of that, we wanna make sure that you can check those boxes and we're not just running out of room for things. You know, you really should be able to have range of motion and then be able to put activation and strength on top of it. Sometimes the thing that gets us in the most trouble is just not having the ability to perform that movement as desired because we don't have the range of motion. So let's take you through a couple of simple screens and we'll start at the top and kind of work our way down and see how you do. A note here, these shouldn't be painful. Stiff, a little bit sore, like you just worked out kind of thing, that's totally fine. If it's painful though, that's to us, that's a little bit of a red flag and you should definitely have that checked out, whether it's by a PT or a medical professional, just somebody that can kind of advise you like, hey, that's bad or hey, let's get that treated and, and calm that down. If you just can't get there, then that's just, you're not, you don't have movement competency or ability in whatever movement we're asking you to do. You know, there is some research that supports that if you don't have these basic ranges that going past that can lead to injury, or even if we have this right to left, you know, side to side asymmetry can also lead to potential injury. So our job as PTs, and also a lot of us are coaches, is we, get, we wanna take as much of that stuff off the table as possible. We wanna be able to make sure that you guys can move well, you know, perform better, feel good while you're doing it, and make sure that you can stay injury free. So here is your at home test. Let's give it a try. We are going to start off with a basic shoulder screen. So we're gonna take one hand and we're gonna place it on our opposite shoulder. And then we're gonna to try to lift that elbow up nice and high and cover your face. Now we're looking for any pain specifically in kind of the front of the shoulder here. And of course I want you to perform that on both sides. If you can do that on both sides and you don't have any pain, great. Doesn't mean that your, sh your shoulders are bulletproof. They just, just means that you don't have any like active pathology right this minute, and that's a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna start off with that. It's like a modified Hawkins Kennedy for all of those kind of PT geeks out there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna continue with the shoulders and we're gonna do our modified scratch test. So what we'll do is I'm gonna face away from the camera. We're gonna take one hand and we're gonna reach up and over our shoulder. We're gonna try to tap or touch that opposite shoulder blade with that arm in its resting position, not lifted up towards you. Can you do that? And then of course, can you go back and behind your back and can you touch the bottom part of that shoulder blade without any pain or limitation? A typical scratch test is actually, can you go and clasp your hands behind on both sides? If you can do that, bonus points, super cool. I'm jealous, I've never been able to do that but I would like to at least be able to see you reach up, tap the top of that opposite shoulder, and then reach behind your back and touch the bottom of that opposite shoulder blade. And again, have that be symmetrical on both sides. To perform the wall sit overhead flexion test, we're gonna start sitting down on the ground, ideally cross-legged, kind of locks out our, our spine, with our butt touching the back of the wall and my back touching the wall as well. From here, I'm gonna straighten my arms. I'm gonna take my thumbs even and kind of like tuck them in. I'm gonna raise my arms up as much as I can, and I'm gonna to try to get it back until my thumb can touch that wall. If I can't, and let's say I can only get to about here or so, this is showing me that if I'm really doing overhead activities and I can't get that arm up into that about 180 degrees, that that motion's gonna to have to come from somewhere else. So usually it's gonna overload my shoulder, maybe it overloads my back. I'm gonna do some sort of compensatory movement in order to achieve that overhead position with any of our overhead press activities or even when we hang from a bar. So we really wanna make sure that the motion is coming from the shoulder and the shoulder blade and even that upper back and that we're not just gonna exploit and beat up that shoulder. So again, both hands coming back up. I wanna make sure you can touch the wall with your thumb as it's tucked in not because you're reaching, and again, not because I'm bending my elbow, but I really wanna keep that elbow straight and make sure I can get there. This position prevents you from overarching, even though you can arch a little bit, but not too much. To perform the wall sit shoulder internal rotation test, we're gonna take a PVC and we're gonna hold it at about the same place that we would hold like a clean grip. So this can be about a thumb's width or so outside of our hips. And if you need to, you can kind of put knurling marks or kind of put the marks on the PVC so you really know where you're at. And what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna bring your elbows up to about shoulder level, even put that hook grip in. And then what I want you to do is sit them nice and tall. Can you pull your hands down, trying to keep your elbows and your shoulder blades on the wall 
and ideally this PVC would touch your torso. Here, admittedly, I fall short. So this is a big limitation for me, but in a perfect world, I'd wanna see enough interrotation through that glenohumeral joint that it actually touches the ribs at this point. While I got you down on the ground, we're now gonna take a look at your wrists as well. So what I want you to do is you're gonna place your palms on the ground, your fingertips pointing forward, and what I want is I want you to straighten your elbows as much as you can and even kind of rotate your uh, elbow armpits forward. And from here, I want you to be able to kind of rock forward and see how far you can get before that palm wants to lift off the ground. So ideally, I want you to be able to get to a minimum of 90 degrees here. So this should be 90 degrees. My palm is still on the ground. If I can get you to more like 100, maybe 110, I'm real happy about that. If we can't even get to 90 degrees, that's gonna limit our ability to perform basic things like push-ups. So the more of this range that we have, and of course we want it to be pain-free, the better. You can do this by testing both sides uh, together. If you feel like something's holding you back and you're not sure, do one at a time. You know, a lot of us have sprained our wrists or broken a wrist and we have some sort of limitation there. So just good to make sure that each side is moving as far as we'd like it to. Another place we see some of these asymmetries. Next, we're gonna go ahead and check how your torso rotates. We actually call this multi-segmental rotation because it's not just about your torso, but a lot of it is your torso as well. So have you stand again with in front of, this time in front of a mirror so that you can see yourself once you do turn around. Ideally with your feet right underneath your hips, you're gonna stand up nice and tall and you're gonna to try to rotate around as far as you can go. In a perfect world, you'd be able to see this opposite shoulder. So in, in this particular case, if the video were my mirror, I would want to be able to see this right shoulder coming through. That being said, I wanna make sure I'm not doing something weird to throw it out there. Again, stay nice and tall, rotate through the legs, hips, shoulders, and spine. And of course, we will perform this on both sides. Again, looking for that opposite shoulder to come through. Also making sure that none of these are painful. Next, we're gonna go ahead and look at our multi-segmental flexion. So we're gonna start with our feet underneath our hips. Keep those legs nice and straight. Have you reach down to the floor and touch your toes and come on back up. So it used to be that I'd ask people to do this and nobody could do it. In the last few years, people have gotten better at touching their toes, but it's still a really good fundamental screen. So next, we're gonna get you guys down on the ground. Have you lie on your back. And let's say you reach down and you try to touch your toes and it went well, that's good. I kinda wanna see where it's coming from. So I wanna see, is it actually coming out of your back or is it coming out of your hips or where is this range coming from? So we kinda have a, a secondary accessory or follow-up test for this, which is just performing a straight leg raise. So we're gonna start with both legs down on the ground. You can have your hands even down by your side. You're gonna tighten both legs so they're both nice and, nice and straight. And then you're gonna lift one leg up as high as you can while you keep that other leg down on the ground. We wanna shoot for about 70 degrees or greater. I should probably be a little bit borderline here, but again, I wanna see, can I get, is it symmetrical on both sides? So again, if you do this with the knee bent on the ground, with the leg that's on the ground, you're not gonna get a reliable test. And also we wanna make sure we don't bend that knee as we're lifting that leg. So try to keep yourself honest here as best you can. Next, we're gonna perform the elbow to instep test. So now we wanna see how well do your hips move into this like flexion, external rotation position. For CrossFit, this is very specific to our squatting. So what I have you guys do is take one foot and place it out in front, and that other leg is gonna go back into this like extended lunge position. Now what I wanna do is with my, my right foot forward, I wanna try to take my right elbow and touch it down to the ground right here at my instep. So that should look like this. And if I keep my foot on the ground and touch my elbow there, I probably got pretty good hip range. Let's try the other side. Same thing, that opposite leg will go back and take that left elbow, reach down, tap it, and I was able to reach. Now, you might find some asymmetry side to side here. We see that all the time, just worth looking into. Our ankle screen, we're gonna start down, kneeling on the ground. We're gonna see how much functional dorsiflexion we have, which means how far forward can this lower leg bone go forward while keeping the foot on the ground, but we wanna make sure that we do it that is, so it is anatomically correct. So we're gonna do two things here. Number one, as a baseline, we'd really like to see you be able to be one fist width away from the wall. So my toe is gonna to touch that, my thumb. 
And then from here, I'm gonna keep my heel down, you can see right here, and I'm gonna push my knee forward until it touches the wall, and I come back. I don't wanna go inside my foot. I wanna make sure that my knee tracks forward, if not even slightly outside, while keeping that heel down the whole time. If I can't do that, well, that's where we kinda of wanna start seeing how much range of motion you do have. So sometimes we can even kind of go, well, how many fingers away am I away from the wall once I'm a fist away? So we kind of standardize down below, and then we can really take a look here and try to measure it that way. Of course, we're going to measure on both sides. So same thing, I'm gonna come down here, make sure I'm a fist away, keeping that heel down. Can I press that knee forward and slightly outside? And can I touch the wall? I can on both sides, so I can check both boxes there. From the front, what this looks like, if you were the wall, as that knee comes forward, I want to make sure it's staying in line with my foot, if not going slightly outside. If I start doing this, it's going to, the mechanics are going to be faulting all the way through my foot and lower leg, and that's not how we'd want you to get ankle dorsiflexion anyway. In order for you to have ankle dorsiflexion, it has to be in the correct plane of motion, which again is forward, if not even slightly forward and outside. We would never ask you to squat and do this, so I don't wanna check your ankle in that plane. We're gonna ask you to squat with your knee or femur kind of tracking in line with your foot, if not slightly outside. So again, that's why we do it that way. Next, I'm gonna take you into this child's pose test. So we're gonna have you guys sit back so your butt goes down to your heels. My toes are pointed. I wanna be able to fold forward until my ribs come down and, and approximate on my thighs here and just see how comfortable it is. I'm looking for how does our back do with a little bit of flexion? How do our hips do with that much flexion? How do my knees do with this much flexion and compression? and even checking your ankle, we call it plantar flexion, pointing down. Something that we often, it gets overlooked, so we wanna catch it here. And then, if that's all clear, I'm gonna take you into this prone position, have you perform a cobra by pressing up like this. And I want you to really press through that ground. You're gonna to try to keep the hips on the ground as long as they can, they can come up a little bit, but we're really just trying to load that spine into extension and kind of clear it there and see how it does. Okay, so that was our CrossFit movement screen. How'd you do? Any pain? Any asymmetries? I mean, maybe, maybe you got some, maybe you have more than you thought. And I'd really encourage you that if you wanna to continue to do CrossFit or functional training injury-free, that you seek out a physical therapist that knows what you're wanting to do. And they know where the little pitfalls are that we can make sure that you avoid those, but also develop a plan to help you feel better, move better, and perform better so that you can do your favorite activities as long as you can. So again, if you went through that screen and you're moving really well and you're checking all the boxes, that's great. Super stoked for you. I think that's fantastic. I'm sure your coaches are happy about it too. If you got some limitations, give us a call and we'll set you up with one of our physical therapists and get you moving better today.